200 acres, 1,600 empty parking spots, and more than 2 million square feet of vacant space. This used to be what we call the D.C. area. Scott Thomas is one of two maintenance men who occupy the expanse now. Going through here, you see places where you used to work with people and kind of get a thing about that and missing them. But, the work uh, gets lonely, oh, well, Thomas says, nice worlds away from his job here as an electrician during Brown and Williamson's heyday. Just about had to wear earplugs 90% of the time, truck traffic going all the time, people walking up and down the hall. And the whir of a machine that turned out 130 billion cigarettes a year at the plant's peak. Ann Hancock can't forget it. That's her and a job she held for 25 years. We worked 12 hours a day. Most of the time you saw those people more than you saw your children at home. But she loved it. The people. The management was good. The pay even better. 27 bucks an hour when many manufacturing jobs elsewhere in Macon paid 13. Plus, B&W provided free health insurance and a generous yeah. pension. I mean, what other companies offer things like that? I don't know of any. Especially to those with little education. I had never graduated from high school. We had some people that couldn't read, couldn't write. At Brown and Williamson's height in 1997, the company employed 3,000 people. They earned an annual payroll of $170 million a year and pumped $470 million into the local economy. I loved my job and I loved what I was doing. Karen Hancock, no relation to Ann Hancock, was the Vice President of Human Resources in October 2003 when the company announced the closure. It was a very stressful time for me because I couldn't tell anybody. She and one other employee in Macon held the secret of Brown and Williamson's impending merger with R.J. Reynolds. It meant this plant would close and consolidate with one in Winston-Salem, North Carolina to form Reynolds America Incorporated. A very tightly closely held secret. But Standing in his old office, former director of the supply chain, Robbie Roberts, recalls the day the news dropped. And there was a video feed with the president of the company, Susan Ivey, telling anybody what was going on. From the floor to the executive suites, all 2,100 employees heard the same words. It very scripted. At the same time, on all levels, people reacted in the same ways. Oh, it was horrible. It was, it was, it was, it was like somebody dying. You kind of stunned thinking, you know, you're going to make a lifetime here. With Pat Topping, making economic development chair then and now, knew the impact would reach outside the factory. There were probably another 5,000 jobs that were impacted by Brown and Williamson closing. Vendors, suppliers, convenience stores, unemployment in Macon reached an eight-year high, 5.4 percent by 2005. B&W closed gradually over two and a half years, letting the last workers go by July 2006. We never recovered from the manufacturing. Nor did the wages. According to the Department of Labor, those types of jobs typically pay an average $16 an hour now, far less than B&W's 20 plus dollars an hour back then. I don't even come close right now. Ann Hancock earned her GED. Oh yeah, Brandon Williamson paid for that. I didn't pay for it. And in her mid-50s, started a new career in customer service. I'm okay with it all. Karen Hancock moved with 600 other B&W employees to the merged Winston-Salem plant. It was different. After five years, she moved back to Macon and retired. It was a very, I mean, different atmosphere because it was not our company. You know, we were the interlopers. Most any kind of industry could come into this facility. Robbie Roberts landed a job managing the empty plant for the company that bought it in 2006, Cumberland and Western Resources. So the highest and best use would be some type of manufacturing facility. Roberts, along with Topping, continue to search for the right tenant. We probably submit this building for projects 10 or 12 times a year. Always a different challenge. Scott Thomas keeps it running and eerily unchanged. The ashtrays still sitting in the conference room, the synthetic plants in the cafeteria still blooming. Uh, every one of them I've talked to do miss it. From the paychecks. You don't find those benefits and conditions nowhere nowadays. To the go. people, the void in making manufacturing looms as large as the empty plant. Laura Lynch-Jones, 13 WMAZ Eyewitness News.